Hey guys, uh, welcome to UK Vapes and Tricks. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Cloudpore Mini and the Kanker Sub Tank. Uh, very nice kit. Uh, picked it up for reasonably cheap from a place in Nottingham. So, so we're going to start with the uh, Cloudpore unit itself. As you can see, it's relatively small. Uh, you've got your buttons on here. This is your firing button. Nice little menu here. It's very nice. Uh, currently screaming to check my atomizer. This thing hits up to 30 watts, which is very impressive for a small, tiny box mod. These two buttons here, these will change your voltage slash watts, depending on what you want it on. We'll go into more detail on that later. This is your adjustable center pin in the middle here. It says Cloudball Mini on the back there. If you slide the stop button, can see the battery goes in. Another cool thing about the uh, the cloud port is that if you uh, press this button here or this button here or the other way around, it will go to right hand or left hand mode. So if I hold this in now, it will swap it around to the other way, which is pretty damn cool if you ask me. So if you're right handed or left handed or whichever way, I did that the wrong way. <laughs> if you are right handed or left handed, you can change it. Like I said, this thing does fire up to 30 watts, which is very impressive, but you hard-hitting vapors out there that want something, you know, 50, 100 watts, this isn't going to cut it for you, really. But it's still a really cool piece of kit. Now let's move on to the Kanga Subtank itself. Uh, this is the large one. Currently holds six millimeters, milliliters, sorry, of liquid. Uh, reasonable size there. As you can see, it looks very nice as well. So the Subtank itself is a bottom filler, obviously. Uh, you've got a removable 510 drip tip there, feel free to add your own. Uh, the cool thing about this, it has a dripper mode and just a normal sort of sub-ohm tank mode. The coil I'm running at the moment is the 0.5 ohm coil just because I wanted to hit some big clouds. There is, with this version, a 1.2 ohm coil with the box and you get the rebuildable mode. We'll go into that and show you soon. But it's pretty easy to change around because you need a different chimney in the middle to change the, uh, the modes. But there's two screws there, you just unscrew them. I'm not going to do this in this video because I've got liquid in this and it is a bit of a hassle to sort it. So as you can see, this is the, uh, the air holes on the, uh, the sub tank here. I've got none at the moment. If I whack that up, there's one. Again, there's two. And once more this three so this is it outside of the box uh, you've got your new chimney here which is rather nice uh, we'll take that out now it needs to come out so this is your chimney as you can see it's a slight bit smaller and a bit thin that's why I don't use it personally a lot of people like it but a few just don't like the size of the chimney which I can understand I don't personally get along with it very well this is the dripper unit itself, but instead of having to drip liquid into it all the time, all you have to do is just fill up your sub tank as normal, but you've got the power of a dripper, so you can run lower ohms. So if you take the top off, you can see that I've already got a uh, dual coil 0.5 build nice wicked in there. Um, it did already come with a 0.5 dual coil in there anyway, which I'm rather happy about. However, they do give you some cotton, organic cotton coil, is the uh, thing they're going for here. Very Japanese cotton, very, very good stuff. Um, so, yeah, you get this bag of cotton, which should last you quite a while because there's quite a lot in there, jam packed full, which I'm quite happy about. So, Kangaroo have done very good on the items that they give you. Another thing to note on the Kangaroo sub tank is the amount of vapor production you get from 20 to 23 watts. I'll show you this now. It's absolutely insane to say what kind of device it is. The with this is, this is the only problem I've found with it so far. Well, there's two, we'll get onto the other one later. Um, you can't hit this higher than 25 watts, no matter what kind of coil you've got in it, apart from if you've got a drip one, obviously. But you can't hit this higher than 25 watts without getting a dry hit, which is a bit of a problem because I did want to hit it on the 30 watt range, but you just can't. But still, at 20 you get great flavour, great vapour, so you can't really complain. Now the second problem comes from the O-rings because I have the original version. 
Now these O-rings have been shouted at a lot online for letting juice come through and leaking down there. I have had this tank for quite a few months now. I have not had this problem. I don't know if I'm lucky or it's just a few people have had that problem. I don't know, but I seem to be a lucky one who's not had to have this problem. I'm quite happy about it. All in all, guys, uh, if you find one of these cheap, definitely pick one up, especially this cloud port. This cloud port and this are just a perfect match because this cloud port can run standard ohms as well. It's not just a sub ohm device. You can whack an autoless on there, for example. Uh, it's great. It fires up to 7, watt, 7 volts and 30 watts. Great piece of kit. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you like this. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. Remember to comment as well, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. This has been UK Vapes and Tricks, signing out.